Hello and welcome to another episode in the Godot Basics tutorial series. In this episode, we will be taking a look at input maps. Input maps, in my opinion, is the easiest way of handling and editing player inputs. In order to use input maps, we have to use the Godot application. In Godot, when you go to project settings, you'll see different tabs. One of them is called input maps. Inside this tab, we have the ability to map basically a string value, in this case UI focus previous, and map it to a specific key or key combination set. In this case, UI focus previous is mapped to the key combination shift and tab. As you can see here, we have other mappings as well, such as UI left being mapped to the left arrow key and the D left pad on a control device. And over here we have the string UI right mapped to the right arrow key, which is also mapped to the controller's right D pad. We also have other customization features as well. For example, we can customize the dead zone that our input has. On top of that, we have the ability to add more keys onto our string map. We can also edit our current key combinations or we can delete our key combinations. To use the input map, we can use the input singleton. In this case, we use the input singleton followed by the dot notation followed by is action pressed. And in our parentheses, we need to pass in a string value, which is the name that we gave to our input map. In this case, we're going to call UI underscore left. And basically when our user presses either the left arrow key, or the left d-pad, we are going to run this line of code. Or rather, this line of code is going to pass back either a true or false value. One thing to note is that because our method starts with the is keyword, we do know that the value we will get back is a Boolean value. On top of that, we also have the input map singleton. The input map singleton manages our input event actions. Input event actions inherits from input events. So basically we're handling input events. This singleton gives us the ability to add, edit, and delete our input mapping when our game is running. I won't be going over it in the example. However, just note that the input map singleton allows us to edit what we added in our project settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. I've opened up project settings and we are inside the input map tab. As you can see here, we have UI left and UI right. UI left has the left key and UI right has the right arrow key. Something I did not mention is that we can also add our own custom mappings as well. To do that, we go over here where you see the word action and on the action, we can go ahead and give a new name. In this case, we can say new move and you just come over here, press the add button and towards the bottom, you're going to see our new move. And by default, we're given the dead zone 0.5. However, we have no mapping. And so in order to give it a map, just press the plus sign which will add a new event. In this case, we're given options, key, joy button, joy access, and mouse button. We're gonna go ahead and press key. It's gonna ask us to pick a key. We can pick one or several keys. Remember that order matters. In this case, shift and Z. We're gonna go ahead and press okay. And now we have a new input action, which we call new move, and it is mapped to the key combinations, shift, and Z. We can also go ahead and edit by pressing the pencil button in order to change our values. And we can go ahead and press the trash can, which will remove the input from our new move. And that's basically it. Now, from the previous homework assignment, we went ahead and added our own key values through raw code. We are going to go ahead and change that and use the string values from our input map tabs. In this case, UI left, UI right, UI up, and UI down. Over here in our physics process, you can see we have our input singleton with the is key press, and we're getting our raw integer value, which is our scan code, in this case, key D A W S. And in order to use the input mappings, we have to use the is action press method. And so all you really have to do is just go ahead and change that value. And now when we run the game, in this case, 
Moving to the right, I'm using the right arrow key press. And that's basically it. You have the ability to use either a scan code using the is key pressed method, or you have the ability to use input mappings through the is action pressed method. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. I'm going to go ahead and upload to GitHub the new edited version of last episode's homework using the is action pressed method which uses our key input bindings from project settings please go ahead and check that out thank you so much for joining me thank you for clicking the like button thank you for clicking the subscribe button i look forward to seeing you in the next episode have an amazing day